Next question is, um, what strategies would you use to avoid the sequence of return risk? There's just no, there's no way to avoid the sequence of returns. Uh, there is one uh, thing that I would advise everybody, which is at least tangentially related to this, and that is when you look at a fund's record, look at this, I mentioned this the other day in connection with the international and the growth in value, put a dollar in the fund and put a dollar in the market and accumulate those dollars each year and then do a one into one chart. So you're not looking at a single unit like the 10 year or 20 year or 30 year performance, you're looking at how it was achieved. And if you see this at the beginning, uh, you'll see it jump right out at you. Probably somebody started a fund with $100,000 and put a whole lot of new issues in it and got way ahead and stayed ahead, <laughs> fell back from that high, uh, but is still way ahead at the end of the game. So there's the market is going to do what the market does, when the market does, uh, and sometimes rationally and sometimes irrationally. But the reality is, and again, coming back to my idea about dividends, and this is slightly a different one, the market is a terrible thing to think about because it has this speculative element in it, which means sometimes it's selling too cheap, cheap and sometimes it's selling too dear. And what we do know, no, no, is that ultimately the return on the stock market, uh, S&P 500, uh, matches the fundamental return of the S&P 500, the dividends, yields, plus the earnings growth it has. Speculation goes, that extra spe spe speculation, and it, but you always come back sooner or later, it may take a while, to the fundamental return that is the return created by business, and that is dividends and earnings growth. And so you know, we can look at the market today and say, it doesn't look so good, and uh, using that particular formula or that particular concept, uh, you're probably right. Uh, but it could be, it did, I didn't say when on any of these things, and it could be a few years, uh, I don't think much more than that, before the market comes down to its speculative, um, its fundamental value. But right now it's higher, and uh, we know that. And, you know, no, but nobody knows when, so you want to be very careful about doing anything about it. You know, what happens is people look at it now and say it's going gonna, it's gonna to go down to its then probably take about a 25% drop or something to get to its normal normalized value, fundamental value, value of the, of the earnings and dividends. Uh, and uh, if someone looks at, well, I'm going to get out now. And, and then a month passes and two months passes and three months pass and a year and two years and five years. And somewhere along the way, the investor says, I was wrong, so I'm going to go back in. That's usually the time <laughs> to get out. So, I, it, 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 if someone, the market is the market. It's based on opinions of people who are smart and people who are dumb, of institutions who are smart and institutions who are dumb, of investors who are lucky and investors who are unlucky, and they all come out with, as a group with a market return. And there's just no predicting the sequence that I know of. And if there were, uh, we wouldn't all be gathered here. Uh, there wouldn't be anything to do. We just, the answers would be easy. But the answers in the market are never easy. And it's very frustrating.